Hi, welcome to Nourish IT. This is Kishore, and today we are going to discuss about uh, how to overload urinary operators. Okay, in last session, I have given how to overload plus operator and comparison operator. Okay, actually, plus operator is what? It is a binary operator. Double equal also what? It is a binary operator. But in this session, I am going to give you how to overload urinary operators and especially in this example, I am going to give how to overload increment and decrement operators. Actually, what is called urinary operator and binary operator means urinary operator requires one operand only and binary operator requires two operands. We know that urinary operator requires one operand, binary operator requires two operands. For example, whenever we are working with plus minus into like that, we should have to use a plus b, a minus b or a greater than b like this. Now, here plus minus greater than all they are binary operators. Why? Because here we are using two operands, two operands, two operands. That is why they are called binary operator. Next, now see this a plus plus, a minus minus. Now, what it is? Only one operand is there. Here also one operand is there. Okay. Next, plus 5, minus 5. Now, how many operands? Only single operand is there. Now, it is called unary plus. It is called unary minus. Next, size of operator is there and tilde operator is there. Now, all these are called what? Unary operators. Now, in this example, I want to show you how to overload increment and decrement operators. And here, one important thing is what? When binary operator is overloaded, by when binary operator is overloaded, one object is implicit and one object is explicit because of we need two objects. Okay? Here, we need two objects. That is why we are making one object implicit and one object explicit. But right now, we are going to overload uh, which operator? Unary operator. That is why there is no need of uh, explicit argument here. Okay? Only implicit object is enough. Now, I will show you how to overload increment and decrement operator. Okay. For example, common header files hash include iostream.h next hash include some conio.h. Okay. Now, these are the common header files. One is for input and output operations, one is for console operations. Next, here I am going to declare a class, for example, some test class. Okay, we need a some class now, that is why here I am going to start a class called test. And here only one member is there, INTA. Now, it is the data member, okay, and here it is a private data member. Next, a value is initialized. No. Now, I want to initialize a value. Then, here I am going to use constructor concept. For example, test. We know that when class name, function name, both are same. When class name, function name, both are same, then it is called what? Constructor. And here, any argument is there? No. Now, it is called default constructor. Okay? Now, in default constructor, I am going to initialize a value with uh, 0. Okay? Now, it is a default constructor and here I have initialized the a value with uh, 0. That is why here what happens? When this class object is created, when this class object is created, automatically a value becomes 0. Okay? Okay, for example, it is the main function. Now, I am going to write a main function and here test t, test t. Actually, t is what? Object. Here, t is the object. Okay. Object declared. When object is created, memory allocated. No? Now, what happens? Here, t object created and t is the object of which class? Test class. Test is having what? INT a data member. That is why a created with the two bytes memory. Okay? In turbo C or C++, integer takes only two bytes. No? Now, 
a variable is created and two bytes memory also allocated. Next, here this object is created. When object is created, what happens? Constructor is executed. That is why here a value becomes automatically 0, which is called automatic initialization of the object. Okay. Constructor main advantage is what? Which initialize the object data automatically, which is called automatic initialization of object. Okay, fine. Now, a value becomes 0. Now, I want to increment the a value. Okay, already a value is what? 0. Now, I want to increment a value. Then, here I am going to write a function like this. Okay. And here, actually we are going to use what? Operator overloading concept. Na? And here I want to overload which operator? Increment and decrement. That is why, here first what? Return type void fine. Later, in operator overloading, the main rule is what? It should be started with the operator keyword. That is why here operator. Okay, fine. Now, operator keyword is defined. Later, which operator we want to overload? That symbol we have to write. That is why here plus plus operator. And here one more point is, in between the operator keyword, and operator symbol, the space is not mandatory, means optional, may be or may not. Okay. Now, with or without space, there is no problem at all. Okay. That is why here, operator keyword and operator symbol, both are available. Okay. And here, the space is optional. Next, here empty brackets. Why? Because here we are overloading unary operator, just before we have discussed when binary operator is overloaded, one explicit object should be passed. But we are overloading which one? Unary operator. When unary operator is overloading with the normal function, means member function, then there is no need of a explicit object. Okay? That is why empty brackets I am going for. Okay, fine. Later, here I am going to write like this. Okay? A plus plus, that is all. Inside this, a plus plus. Now, what happened? When this function, actually it is nothing but a function now, but in place of function we are using operator symbol. Okay? It is called operator overloading. Uh, now, see this. Here plus plus is used inside that A plus plus. Okay, fine. Later, I am going to write one more function. Suppose void operator. Now, which operator I want to use? minus minus decrement operator. Actually, here I have used increment operator. Now, I am going to use decrement operator. Next, there is no object at all and here I am going to write like this a minus minus brackets close. That is why here I am going to use increment, here I am going to use decrement operator. Later, I want to show the result. Now. That is why here one more function called void show. Okay. Here, C out A equal to A end L and function close class closed. Now, what happens? Show is going to show the A current status means value of the A. Okay, fine. Now, here class created, data member declared and using a constructor, default constructor. Now, it is a default constructor and default constructor is used to initialize the a value with the 0. Later, operator plus plus, plus 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 operator overloaded here minus minus. Okay. Now, class creation, class definition completed. Later, we have to call the class member functions. Okay. Now, test t, t is the object of test class and here in our class, we have used a constructor now and this constructor is invoked automatically when this object is created. Due to this what happened? A value initialized with 0. Okay, fine. Now, A value 0. Okay. It is the A memory and starting value 0. Later, see this CLR, CR. Okay. Later, I want to give like this. Actual object name is what? T. Here, I am going to write like this. T plus plus. Okay. And tell me, first of all, plus plus or minus minus are what? Increment and decrement operators 
and generally they are working on numbers only, they are working on integer data. But here T is an integer data and integer is what? It is a predefined data type, integer is a predefined data type. But here in this example, I am using the plus plus operator increment operator on user defined data type. Okay? Actually operator overloading main concept is what? Okay? Using an operator instead of a function to do a particular task. Why? Because okay, general operators, generally operators works on user defined data type or predefined data type. Okay? Generally operators are designed to work with predefined data type like uh, integer float to character like this. But in order to work with user defined data type, the operators are overloaded. Now, here T is the what object of which class test, test is what? It is a user defined data type that is why now the plus plus is used with the object name and here watch it plus plus is a unary operator. Na? That is why on left side we are sending object of that class. Okay. Yesterday I have given rule in operator overloading the left side value should be of the object of same class. That is why here only we are using what unary, unary means only one argument is required that is why only one argument passed and there is no explicit argument required. Okay. Next t plus plus, when t plus plus is called what happens? Actually, t is what object name fine. Next, plus plus is nothing but uh, this one. Uh, okay, that means now it is nothing but function calling, and now it is going to this one. Here, inside this function call, what happened? A incremented, a plus plus. That's why it becomes one. Actually, here you have used the a value now, t value now. Here we are calling the object but actually it is affecting on a value means we are directly not working on predefined data type we are working through user defined data type okay t plus plus when t plus plus is called a plus plus a value becomes one okay suppose second time i am going to call this time t minus minus now when t minus minus is called minus minus means this one now the function call is linked with this function means operator. Now, a minus minus, a value becomes what once again 0, a value becomes 0. Okay. Now, I want to show you the results are changed or not that is why after this t plus plus immediately I am going to write t dot show because of we have to watch the output now value changed or not changed or we have to watch that word. Now. That is why after t plus plus I am going to show t dot show. When show function is called what happening a value is going to print. That is why on the screen okay, now a equal to right now a value is what when first time it is called 0 becomes 1 now that is why 1 a value becomes 1 and suppose this time I am going to use t minus minus. Now what happened 1 becomes 0. Now, once again t dot show. Now, what happens? A value becomes once again 0. Now, get ch program close. Okay. That is why here in place of uh, predefined data type, uh, we are calling user defined data type. Okay. It is possible only with what? Operator overloading. That is why in order to work with user defined data type, the operators are overloaded because of the existing operators works only on predefined data types. Okay. It is how to overload unary operators like uh, plus plus and minus minus. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.